Some time ago, I found one of these hoverboards that were all the craze uh, thrown out in the trash. It was broken. So I decided to take it and see if I could salvage some materials from it. Uh, there might be some aluminum inside. The motors will definitely have some copper that can be all be smelted and cast into something new. So I took it apart and I shelved the parts uh, for later. The motors I did not take apart, I just left them as they were because I thought maybe I could use them. And recently I've been thinking, yeah, I could use them for something. I could make a robot and I've always wanted to see if I could make something that was self-balancing. And these uh, motors were actually made to do that on the hoverboards. So I decided to see if I could uh, do that. Alright, so here we have one of the motors from the hoverboard and um, it has an axle here which was mounted inside the hoverboard and the whole wheel is the motor and you can see the windings behind this little some plastic here and um, anyway uh, out of it comes some wires uh, there are three thick wires uh, green yellow and blue and then there are some thin wires um, coming out of it uh, green yellow and blue and black and red and then there's a white one and I've uh, already taken uh, the opportunity to mount a plug here I'll show you what this is for later but anyway um, the wires are mounted so that uh, green goes to green, um, blue goes to white, and red goes to red. And that's because, and then we have red and black. So red is 5 volts, black is ground, and then the uh, blue, yellow and green wires here correspond to the blue, yellow and green wires here. And those are the three phases for the motor. So this is a three-phase uh, motor, and um, you need a motor controller too. So I bought a 63-volt, 400-watt motor controller, a cheap one, Chinese one, I think, from Amazon. And uh, as you can see, it is comes supplied with a little plug that I also mounted on the motor right there. And that is because it fits in that little plug there let's just unpack this all right and so the color coding uh, here is almost the same as on the motor except the blue wire is white here um, if you look down under the plug you will see that it says HA HBAC and that's for Hall effect sensors um, A B and C and then over here on the side you can see it has A B and C uh, inputs and then it has voltage input and ground the a b and c here needs to match up with the a b and c here but also it's important that the order of the wires are mounted correctly because the depending on the configuration of the th th three phase motor it might be pulling in the wrong direction if you let us just uh, put this together and see if we can get it to work all right <clears throat> now I've connected up the motor controller with a power tool battery um, and I've connected the motor with the motor controller as well as you can see I've added the wires red and black from the battery this is an 18 volt battery so it's not as close to the maximum voltage that this <clears throat> device can handle but it's good enough just to show how it works um, the color coding here from the motor is blue yellow green and that color coding I got from the original plug that was delivered with the motor controller which has the color coding white yellow and green and as I said before white corresponds to blue so this makes sure that the order of the um, the faces on the motor is correctly mounted to the power output and to the Hall uh, effect sensors. 
All right, so um, they have a little potentiometer here, um, which can be used to control the motor. Um, so let me just see if I can uh, turn it a little bit. Yeah, so. Um, it, it, it works. And um, um, of, of course, if you want to control this uh, motor uh, with... Um, computer you can't uh, you can't uh, you could I guess make a, a potentiometer and, and, and attach uh, maybe a servo to it and then control the um, potentiometer with the servo but a much better way is to solder um, what do you call a connection between those two poles right down there those two connectors right down there and that enables pulse width modulation control of this motor controller and with pulse with modulation you can you can use these ports right here it's a little bit difficult now to see it now that the light is there it's the wrong direction right now but here the p input is the pulse g is ground and s is for speed all right <clears throat> so in order to solder those two little uh, paths um, together i have i had to unmount the um, motor controller from the schooling pad by unscrewing those two screws right there and now that I've done that I can get to the underbelly of this thing and I can um, let's see I'm gonna move this up a little bit and then I'm gonna move this back a little bit here so now I have access to the these two soldering pads from the bottom and I'm just gonna solder a, a joint there all right I have soldered a little shorting wire here as you can see I pulled it in from the top and I soldered it on the bottom all right I have now assembled the uh, cooling uh, profile to the motor controller again and I have also attached a wire, uh, soldered a wire to the P and I have also grounded, taken a ground pin and added it to an Arduino. So the uh, pulse pin goes to pin 8 here on uh, the Arduino and the ground goes to ground. And by doing that, I'll be able to send uh, pulses to the motor controller from the Arduino and thereby controlling the motor. And um, the Arduino is uh, mounted to my computer uh, here. And um, yeah, let's jump into uh, Arduino Studio. All right, so here we are in Arduino Studio. And all we have to do to get our motor running is to initialize the output pin which I fallaciously called pin 8 in the previous video I didn't notice that pin 8 is not designed to do pulse width modulation so we are switching that to pin number 9 um, anyway we initialize pin number uh, 9 to uh, output on Arduino, pulse width modulation is done with a byte value, uh, meaning that the uh, zero intensity is two is zero and uh, two fifty five is full intensity. So um, if we just set it to two fifty five, then we will have the motor running at full speed. But in this case, I think we will just settle with something a little bit slower. Uh, let's just do fifty to begin with. And let's just compile it and send it to the Arduino and see if it runs. And as you can see, the motor is running with the speed of 55. Let's try to increase the speed to 100 and see if that makes a difference. I'm just going to do that here, 100, and then send it again. Compiles, and there we go. now it goes faster. So that's it. That's basically all you have to do in order to control a three-phase motor with an Arduino. 
In the next video, we will look at how to communicate between the Arduino and a computer and how to give commands from the computer to the Arduino and receive information back from the Arduino.